I'm going to show you how to model a banana cell using the Dynamic Cell Model Kit. Now, I will show you in a separate video how to make a wet mat of a banana, and it's very simple, but I've done that here and I've stained it with iodine. <clears throat> this is the live view of the banana cell, and all these purple things are the amyloplasts. Some are small, some are bigger, and the cells often have a banana shape to them. We took a photo of this cell, and that's shown over on this other side of the monitor. And this is the image that we're going to use to model a banana cell for you. Let's model the banana cell that we saw in the microscope. Again, we'll need a cell wall and a cell membrane. Now often, students will ask if there really is a cell wall in the banana cells, because it's hard to see in some cells. But in other cells, you can see it. In the one we looked at, the edge was a little bit, there were, seemed to be two edges to our cell. So you could see it in places. Um, and it's a good conversational topic because the students might want to know whether all plant cells have to have cell walls or not. And it opens up some new conversations. So I'm now acting as the set of skeleton and bending the cell into the right shape to be a banana cell, somewhat banana-esque. Now our banana cell had amyloplasts in it. We need two membranes for the amyloplasts, the starch-filled iodine-stained inner and the unstained outer membrane that doesn't have any starch in it. And we have small amyloplasts as well as large amyloplasts. In the cell that we viewed, the large amyloplast, there was one way up here, there was another really large one about over here, and then we had some other small ones around, maybe one other large one over he here, depends on whether you think you can fit them in the cell, and we can put the other amyloplasts in where they go. I actually think this one looks better and represents our cell better. And now we've modeled our banana cell.